What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. So I got something to share with you. Just a few minutes ago I was in the uh, kitchen next to our living room getting ready to go. I'm taking you guys along on a um, much dated update today so stay tuned for that. But uh, I was sitting there, I was uh, taking my medication and stuff and all of a sudden I heard this awful noise and it scared the far out of me and I looked out the window and I didn't see anything so I went back and uh, looked at the camera footage on our Google Nest Cam and wouldn't you know I wasn't the only one that was kind of startled by this awkward noise my main man Mojo here he didn't like it too much either did you oh dad you know better than that I was fully aware of what was going on and it wasn't Mr. Smeagol it was the other cat Miss Gracie Gracie, what was you thinking? Do you know how bad you scared me and Mojo? Sure, run away now. <laughs> Anyways, check out this footage. I couldn't believe it. So every once in a while these little birds they fly into our underneath our um, ceiling of our patio like I guess they're looking for a place to make a nest or something and these cats try to jump up and grab them but this is the first time I've ever seen this so we got these uh, pillars here these brick pillars with these cedar posts that kind of hold up the roof on our patio and anyways the cats like to get up here um, Rachel used to have hummingbird feeder she loves hummingbird feeders and watching the hummingbirds and stuff but we had to take them down because of these cats because the cats would get up right here and they would leap and grab the hummingbirds out of mid-air and eat them and we didn't want to lose any more hummingbirds so we just did away with the hummingbird feeders up here but anyways I have never seen a cat jump that far look at how high this is this is probably six foot she was sitting right here on this pillar and she jumped up and grabbed the gutter on the side of the house. Now I've never even seen you do that, Mr. Smeagolman. But anyways, Mojo, it's okay to admit we were a little startled. I know you weren't scared because you are—you probably knew it was just a cat, but I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what to think. It was just a loud noise that scared the fire out of me. Right? Oh, you're silly, dude. <laughs> But anyways guys, I am going to bring you guys along with me today. I have been getting tons and tons of questions and it has been so long since I've updated you guys on the process of my old truck that I'm having restored or redone, whatever you want to call it. It's not going to be completely stock when we get done with it. But my buddy Steve at Steve's Speed Shop has came a long way on it. I haven't sent you guys any update pictures or done any update videos in months and months. But that is where I'm fixing to go early this morning uh, before it gets too hot. We're going to go make a trip over there. It's only about 10-15 minutes away. And I want to show you guys how much work he's already put into this thing. Things are really starting to come along now. Um, I'm going to show you guys the color that we've went with. If you guys haven't went and checked out his channel, he's he's already posted some videos and stuff. And he's actually released the color of the truck. And if you didn't know, to get this project going, I let my wife pick the color of the truck. You guys know how it is when uh, you, you, you got a project idea and stuff. And your wife's like, well, how much is that going to cost? And... All that good stuff. Well, I let Rachel pick the color of the truck out, um, but she's got good taste on it, and uh, I actually like it. So, anyways, I'm going to uh, get wrapped up here and head that way, and hopefully you guys enjoy today's video. All right, guys, so we are at Steve's Speed Shop. There's my buddy Steve. You guys know him in some of the previous videos. And just to go back a little bit, um, I forgot at the beginning of this video, the old truck I'm talking about that he is redoing for me is a 1986, or it was a 1986 Chevy C10. It had a uh, it had a 350 motor in it, 
you know, it was gutless. It had all kinds of problems and uh, he rebuilt the 5.3 engine. I'm gonna let him kind of talk about some of the stuff because it's been so long since I've been here and gave you guys an update and we have a lot of stuff to show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and show you guys. It's gonna reveal the body color, which my wife Rachel picked out. You guys know that. But this is how far we are on the truck now. And I'm gonna throw up a picture right here to show you what it looked like when I found it out in a field, put it on a trailer, and then we hauled it over here to Steve's shop. And uh, he's been doing a lot of work. So anyways, here we go. So here we are now. And uh, let's get to the color real quick because everybody keeps asking me in other videos, what's the status, what's the color? This is the color. This is actually a, I believe the color is a seafoam green. Yep. And it's, I think it's an old factory Chevy color from way back. Yeah, this is actually, seafoam green goes back to the 50s. Yeah. Um, and, and this is uh, basically a quintessential color for back then. The, the, the seafoam green and white, those, yeah. a lot of trucks, cars. Uh, in fact, my wife, she's got a 56 four-door station wagon, 56 Chevy, and she wants it. She wants it <laughs> seafoam green and white, but... I'm not working on that one until she gets out there and yep. starts helping me with it. So, so but, yeah, so uh, real quick, the last time you guys seen this, it was pretty much a full truck and uh, Steve was disassembling it. He was tearing it all down um, to get to the frame. He actually has taken, taken every bolt, like every bolt that was in this thing, he took apart, he took every part off. And uh, see this frame right here, guys? It used to look like this. This this isn't staying on there by no means. I'll let him talk about that in a minute. But look at the frame. Yeah, the frame was powder coated. Uh, and to Kevin's point, I've put him through probably, I don't know, a half a dozen uh, phases of uh, anxiety over this truck as far <laughs> as how far we've taken it apart. But I think at the end of the day, he's gonna be super satisfied with what we've done. But Essentially, um, and I've got a lot of the videos on my channel as well through the progress of this build. So, you know, we did see notch the frame. We ended up pulling the frame completely apart because at the point where we were gonna go, you know, four more cab mounts, the, the frame's out, we could do a much better job of, of the finish. And, you know, for a few more dollars more, we could just, we could get it powder coated and it would really improve the quality, but. And, and while you said C-notch, uh, to people that don't know what that is, so uh, Steve took this bracket right here, he cut this frame out because we put a, uh, I believe it was a 5.3 drop yep. from the factory yep. height on this truck, so yep. now. Once again, if, uh, when you look at the, the C-notch, this is another video that I put together on, on uh, my channel as well. I go over this C notch in the installation. Essentially, what this what this kit is is a flip kit where the the rear end used to sit underneath the springs, and the kit actually brings it up on top to to drop the rear of the truck. But in the rear section here, uh, the rear end has been completely gone through. It's got uh, uh, I think it's a 342 or a 350 gear ratio. It is a limited slip. We put new Yukon gears, Yukon lockers. The axles were, were repurposed. Every bearing and seal uh, has been done. All of this is featured on my channel as well. The, the rear end itself and the springs, the springs are, are brand new, which I kind of ran into a little bit of an ordering dilemma on those, but everything is new. The shackles are new. Um, the rear end and the springs for for most part are they're just they're some good tractor paint that we painted those with so it uh i found that this paint at tractor supply and it, it's really good and it's really durable the last kind of the cool feature on the rear is we did convert the rear to disc brake and as you can see on the front and rear i had the the calipers actually body color i had those powder coated that is not paint so ended up stripping a brand new caliper apart, sending it down to my guy that did the frame. He does exceptional work. So we got that. Uh, I've still got to build out the brake lines on the rear end, which I'm gonna probably feature out how to bend brake lines on, 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 a, on a future video. And uh, we can kind of move to the front unless you've got something else. <laughs> no, so you started off, you stripped down the truck, you sent the frame to get sandblasted and powder coated this black color. And then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, the uh, the on the the chassis itself, of course, the assembly, the 
The upper upper and lower control arms were replaced. It's got new Beltec spindles. These are CPP upper and lower tubular control arms. Um, all the steering components have been replaced with the exception of the center link and the steering box. And the center link and steering box, the center link was in really good shape. And of course the steering box really gave me no reason to replace, so it's just painted. Um, it's got new shocks. <clears throat> it's it's just very clean. And once again, like I said, we, we've got the calipers, they're painted, they're body color as well. And then it's got a new set of disc brakes on the front. Everything is brand new on this. All the hoses, brake lines, everything will be brand new. Uh, what I like is a lot of the suspension stuff is all uh, greasable. Yeah, that's so. that's the life of that for sure. Um, we'll have once the truck's all done and all the weights back on it, we'll have to get the front end aligned and stuff. But you know, we've also yeah, I did upload a video, another progress video last night. You'll have to check it out where we actually fit the cab and the entire front clip. Uh, me and the guy that actually is doing the paint and body. So. We had to pre-fit everything back together because the hood, his hood had a lot of damage. And if you watch some of my older, uh, my other videos on cars, if you don't pre-fit these parts, uh, you're just asking for problems. So <clears throat> anyway, on the engine, it's uh, it's just a 5.3, it's an LM7. And it's, it's basically, we have completely went through the engine. Once again, there are videos on my channel for that. Yeah, and so what he's saying is the old carbureted engine in here, I didn't want anything to do with the carburetors. No more stuff, because if you guys know carburetors, the, the gas they sell now is trash. It sets, you gotta work on them. I didn't want anything carburetor, and I made that clear to him. I was like, I want a 5.3 swap, and that's where we're at. So this thing will be fuel injected. This actually is a engine block out of like a 2005 or some old Chevy truck, and then it's gonna have all new you know, the newer technology that you see in vehicles nowadays. Yeah, we've got, uh, uh, there's still some things on that once I get the cab set, the wiring harness and the ECU, getting those flushed out. But this gives you the modern technology, especially going through and doing all the suspension and stuff. Um, it, it just basically, it's it, it's almost like they, they should have put these engines in these trucks in 1985, 86, and 87 because nice. they fit so well. And these things run forever. So on the fuel injection side, I think you, you guys also saw the fuel cell, uh, excuse me, fuel yeah. tank, which is is another upgrade f that we made for the fuel system. These, uh, I, I feature this on a cha on a, another yeah. video also. So And originally this truck had the dual tanks yes. on each side and we deleted one and uh, went with the brand new one here with the new fuel pump and everything, so. Yep. Yeah, that uh, this this is a kit that you can buy. I've used these. They're from Tanks Incorporated. They work well. It's got plenty of fuel pump to supply the engine. And uh, but yeah, it's uh, and the transmission you had it rebuilt. Yeah, I, I, I actually had a transmission rebuilt. Yeah, I've got a guy locally. This 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 triple R transmissions. He's done uh, he's done about every automatic that I build. I sent them to him. His, uh, his work is flawless. He does a super amazing job on them and he stands behind them. So right. uh, if, if we get this transmission, even though it's been a while since it's built, uh, I've, I've literally called him in the past and, and had to pull them out and bring them to him. And he, he's, he's definitely worth using unless you're, you know, you're buying, buying some high dollar, very expensive something to where you're, you're gonna buy it from, you know, a vendor that's going to be you know three four times the price but kind of the last thing on the engine too we you've got an absolutely we we put these hooker headers on here these yeah, are absolutely nice gorgeous look. headers well he even went the steve even went the extra step and look at the block it even matches the body color so that that just to me that stands out great especially with these stainless headers it i think it looks awesome yeah it's 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 going to be nice i these these newer style headers, I, I'm not a huge fan, and I, I talk about this in, in the video where I actually assembled all this. On this exhaust too, I, I, I weld V-bands on your exhaust, so we're gonna get rid of any potential leaks. These V-bands are, are definitely the way to go for the uh, any type of exhaust couplers. They're, they're, worth, they're worth spending the money and get rid of the old flanges, especially. These, on the newer model stuff, they're designed to do a slip fit with, with basically a band clamp. And I'm not a fan of those, so they get gone. So 
<laughs> anyway, other than that, I mean, we've got the wheels set on it, and it. Uh, the video that I put up last night kind of shows you a little bit how the, the how the truck's going to look as far as stance. But yeah, it's. Uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have 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 folks along that uh, are like Kevin that they're kind of in for the. I, I, like I said, I sticker shocked him a few times, but. Um, Definitely, he's 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 in both feet to get it done. So it's going to be a nice truck once it's there. So it's it's coming along. This isn't something that just happens overnight, guys. So uh, like Steve, he has all kinds of projects. He isn't just working on this truck. He actually has a full time job right now. And uh, I'm going to show you something real quick. This is another one of my dream cars. I don't know what year exactly. I'm going to say like '65 or so. 68. Fast '68 Fastback Mustang that he's doing. And uh, this would be my next project if I can find one. But he's just gonna flash around. I'm not gonna show you everything he has. But he has all kinds of cars and stuff going on. So while he's working on my truck, he's also working on all kinds of stuff at the same time. But uh, it's coming along, and uh, he's making great progress. And now I think we're on the down the stretch because now the body and everything is actually. I don't know if I have any pictures or not, but the body is actually at Chris's, and it's he's fixing to start sanding on it like any day. And he's gonna start painting it. Yeah, so. it's it's, it's it, for the most part the body's in in the final blocking stage, and you know I'm hoping the the paint and body process is is always it's it's slow it's yeah. it's extremely slow. This one's this one's progressed a little bit farther just given the fact that Chris is doing this kind of in his shop as as a full time gig, but. Uh, kind of backing up what Kevin was talking about too. There's there's a ton of projects in this shop and. I feature them all on my channel as well, and I've got some a lot of really, awesome, cool, yeah. classic cars. There's, man. yeah, there's some cool stuff. There's a what's that, sixty nine Camaro? Camaro. Yeah. He, won't, he won't sell that one. That would be a nice one to redo too. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one back in the back that's uh, got quite a bit of video on it that uh, is going to be a nice car as well. Um, it'll feature a six speed auto, or excuse me, a, it's got an LS three and and features a six speed Tremec transmission, and then it's got a lot of body. A lot of body panels have been done, but it's going to be a gorgeous car. So, but yeah, it's yeah, uh, so it's it's a it's a full time part time. So <laughs> when I when I got here, we talked a little bit, and he said, "Well, I got got to sit you down and talk about some stuff." I was like, "Oh boy, it feels like I'm going to the principal's office." What now? He's like, "No, no, no, nothing bad." He wants me to decide on an exhaust. He said, "Do you want to go two and a half inch? Do you want to go three inch? Do you want to do the?" Uh, uh stainless do you want what do you want to do and i'm like oh boy i don't know i said i'm about to get back on youtube and yes. uh actually yeah that's not a bad idea because <laughs> there are a lot of you folks that came over from kevin's page that actually jumped ship and i can't thank you guys enough for doing that but you guys could tell him yeah tell him uh the choices are two or three inch and then aluminized or stainless two and a half or three inch, yeah right? two and a half or three and either one to me um i can do either but so stainless is going to be more expensive but it's going to last forever the luma code or whatever it's called is uh basically what most vehicles come from the factory with and you know they don't last forever they kind of don't look as good they get rusty especially with the but water they're vapors. cheaper yeah the water vapors that you get that burn off right. the fuel and stuff you, you always when you start your vehicle you see all the water right. out of your tailpipes and after a while that stuff's going to sit and it's going to rot and rust but the, but the big thing is the noise right we build these trucks we want to get in a truck or car or vehicle that sounds good and sounds nice but uh, I'm gonna have to get online and get on YouTube and do some research because this thing has a, a cam in it, a truck Norris cam. And when you put a cam with an exhaust, that make to me that makes all the difference. <laughs> this one's gonna be. <laughs> this one's <laughs> gonna have a. There's there's some pretty cool memes out there. <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, some Facebook reels with uh, idle clips, and then you've got this little pig that's snorting. <laughs> you've seen them. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> this yeah. is gonna be pretty choppy cam. Yeah. And. The big problem with this truck and, and most trucks is you get droning inside the cab. So we do have sound deadener and worst case, we'll double up on the sound deadener on the floor of the truck to where um, it won't be as noticeable, but um, you, you, you build vehicles like this, uh, it's kind of like fuel mileage. It's, it's not about miles per gallon, but the smiles per gallon. So. Right, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't look at the gas pump. No, but uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is we, these was not the factory wheels. We went with 20 inch wheels. Um, they're, you know, new, newer wheels. So uh, 
I know a lot of people, a lot of you you people that watch your videos are gonna say, I can't believe you didn't leave it stock and this and that, but that's not that was not my intention ever of putting anything really stock back on it. Now some stuff will be, but for most, like he said, everything is pretty much new. So if we wanna jump in this truck and drive it across country, we should not have a problem, right? Yeah, it's uh that that's kind of the advantage of the technology with the engine and transmission. You've got a fourth it's electronically shifted four speed transmission and you know your cruise speeds out on the highway with this should be you know 65 70 mile an hour you should be around 2000 to 2100 2100 wow. rpm so and if we step on it what will the what will the rear tires do um i don't think it's going to do much at 70 no but, no no, but, no not but from a dead stop stand still <laughs> I, like i told you earlier you could probably yeah. uh if you want to you could replace those tires every couple no, of we weeks. don't want to do that <laughs> tires are not cheap no. anymore well they never have no them. i just put a set on my truck and it was about 1300 dollars. Yeah. so but uh yeah he's 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 got a whole shelf of parts and stuff he's going to be uh working on this a lot here in the coming weeks and months he's going to be it's going to be gradually changing like every week so be sure to go over to steve, steve speed shop i'll put a link in the description below subscribe to him and you guys can get uh quicker updates on this like i said i ain't been here two or three, two or three months to actually film and show you guys an update on it and look at how much drastic change we are looking at now so Go subscribe to his channel and uh, look at all his other projects. He's got a lot of cool older videos and stuff. He's got a lot of awesome cars in here. Some very valuable cars that he's worked on. He does mostly just custom work and he does an exceptional job. So go subscribe, tell him Kevin sent you and tell him thank you for uh, taking on one of my dream truck projects. And it's been a it's been a awesome just seeing the transformation of taking a truck that you find in a field that's just sitting there rotting with rust and uh, someone like Steve can turn it around and make it just look like it come off the showroom floor, but even better, right? Yeah, and if you guys do come over, uh, I'll tell you now, I usually try to say this in every video I put together. I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the followers and, and I, I do, a lot of times I try to get back with everybody's comments and uh, I, I always enjoy positive feedback. So I try to interact as best I can. Right now, it's uh, I only have I don't have a ton of views on a lot of my videos, but uh, um, I try to uh, I try to engage the people that 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 have the not you know good comments to say. But uh, definitely appreciate it. I, I've only been on there for about a year, and I think I've I've got about 75 videos, and uh, wow, been experimenting with you know different editing and stuff. And and one of these days, you know, Kevin kind of he kind of touched the surface too. But I'm kind of a one man gang in here, one man show, and. For me to do all the filming, editing, and then try to keep good progress on the vehicles, it's it's definitely oh, and a full time job. <laughs> um, it's definitely it's definitely a, a struggle. So um, there are some big changes coming in my future too. So and I'll talk about a lot of that on my channel. So uh, the support's greatly appreciated. So if you do come over, I hope you enjoy what you get to see. So there you go. There's your update on the truck, and I will see you guys back at the farm here in a little bit okay guys so i am back home i just wanted to take you guys along i know i've been getting a lot of uh people wanting to know the update of the truck build and there you go steve has been doing a wonderful job with it um it's way more than i ever expected i didn't actually figure in going that far into a restoration project but i'm glad we took the step and it's going to be pretty much a brand new truck so anyways, make sure to go subscribe to Steve's Speed Shop and uh, tell him that Kevin sent you. Watch some of the other videos. He's He's been videoing as we go. So I've been kind of letting him video so I didn't have to video at all. So he's got a lot of those steps and stuff, all the things he's did on his channel. But I'm back at the farm now and if you guys caught the last video, we come out and we turned loose the little banny hen that I had over in the chicken tractor that had the hurt foot and you can see she is back with her friends the other banny chickens and uh she's with them step for step she's still got a little bit of a limp but she is doing much better than she was when we uh, originally put her in there so it's hot it's summertime um mojo he is nowhere to be found right now because the fireworks are going off it's almost fourth of july people keep setting off fireworks and you can see mr smeagol look at mr smeagol there He's, 
he's on he's on watch duty right now but anyways yeah people keep setting off fireworks because it's almost fourth of july mojo does not do loud noises like that so he is uh he's hiding at the back of the house right now he's actually staying cool in his dirt dirt little hole that he digs but anyway everything's going good um i'm gonna wait a little bit to go feed it's still early afternoon uh, a little too hot to be feeding right now the dogs just don't have an appetite when it's this hot you gotta let it cool down a little bit in the evening but anyways uh that's pretty much all i got for video today i wanted to bring you guys along and uh please leave a comment down below what do you think about the color that rachel picked out for the truck i absolutely love it seen it actually sprayed on something it looks so much better than even the color that we picked out on the color chart and uh it's just it's just awesome to see and uh i was gonna tell you something else but i just can't forget i just keep forgetting what i was gonna say so i don't remember now but uh anyways oh it was about keeping the truck stock i think i kind of touched base on that a little bit earlier um i know some of you would be like i can't believe that you didn't keep that truck stock blah 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 the actual truck has no sentimental um i guess value to me as far as it wasn't passed down by a family member or nothing like that i wanted to take an older truck that's one of my favorite models of trucks back when they may, still made things really good and i wanted to bring it up with technology you might say and uh you know the fuel injected motor and we'll put led lights in it all that type of stuff it'll be a reliable truck and it'll be even more fuel efficient doing it that way but anyways i don't i didn't have any sentimental value to me to like keep it original it wasn't like my great grandpa's truck that's been sitting in a barn for a long time i know i'm gonna get some questions like that why are you changing this why blah 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 but anyways that is the story behind that. i just wanted a truck to look cool and be able to ride in and uh you know keep, hopefully keep it for a long time and uh go from there but anyways guys thank you so much for joining in today's video please leave a comment down below subscribe if you're not subscribed Go check out Steve's channel, tell him Kevin sent you, and we'll see you next time.